Welcome to another edition of Don't Lecture Me. I'm Ron Brown, and today I have as my guest author Hester Bass. So Hester has written the book The Secret World of Walter Anderson. It's an illustrated book about the renowned Mississippi artist Walter Anderson. Hester, welcome to the show, and you have to be very excited about your new book. I am. I'm very excited. I've wanted to write this for many years. Now, why an illustrated book about an illustrator like uh, Walter Anderson? Well, uh, there were many, many books about Walter Anderson, but I used to live in Ocean Springs, and I used to be a storyteller, and I used to go to the Walter Anderson Museum of Art and tell the children the story of Walter Anderson, and I realized there's no book for them. So I'm very proud to be the one to bring the illustrated picture book biography to the market for children about Walter Anderson. Mm -hmm. And you chose as your illustrator E.B. Lewis. Tell me about him. Okay, well I chose him, but that's a very unusual situation. Usually a publisher chooses the illustrator, but in this case Candlewick is so wonderful uh -huh. that they asked me who would I who would be my number one choice, and that was E.B. Lewis. I wanted a superb watercolorist, and I wanted someone who would really understand the artist's journey of Walter Anderson. And we actually collaborated on this much more than most artists and illustrators uh, would ever with an author. Uh, actually in 50 books, uh, he's a Coretta Scott King Award winner and a Haldicott Honor Award winner, and in 50 books he's only worked with the author twice. So I'm very honored to be one of those so times. So he didn't find it very daunting to be illustrating no, you know, Walter no, Anderson? No, nope, no, nope, he didn't. He was fascinated by his story. We went to Mississippi, I introduced him to the Walter Anderson family, we went to the museum, went to Horn Island, and we posed every um, picture that you see. So we used the props and we used models. Actually two of Walter Anderson's children posing as their parents. Oh, is that right? So mm -hmm. that had to be a very special time. It was a very special time. Now, you say that E.B. Lewis is an award winner. You're also yes. an award winner. Tell me about that. Oh, well, uh, the book was just voted by Kirkus Reviews as one of the best children's books of 2009, so I'm very proud about that. I was also chosen by the so uh, Southern Independent Booksellers Alliance as an okra pick. So uh, that means that it's a great Southern book that they're looking forward to hand selling. So that's just the beginning. It's only been out for a couple of months, so uh -huh. I'm very excited. It's all just starting right now. It is. Mm -hmm. well, what's the prescribed length for a children's book? This one's about 20 pages. Is that about uh, average or is there an average? Did you give much thought to that? Uh, average for a illustrated picture book for children is 32 printed pages. This book is actually 48. Oh, it's 48. When, okay. when you consider the first part of the book as well as the author's note, which is illustrated by Walter Anderson's own work, mm -hmm. uh, it's 48 pages, which reflects Candlewick's commitment to the book and telling the entire story. Mm -hmm. Now this is a biography, but it's also prose, and how much thought, I mean, you have to really condense mm. when you're talking about writing something this short. So. Yes, yes, and when you're writing for children, I tried very hard not to, to dumb down the language in any way, but to make it simple enough that they could understand and use words in context. And uh, it is a daunting task to take someone's life, especially someone like Walter Anderson, whose life was so interesting, mm -hmm. uh, and reduce it down. But I don't think we lost anything, and I uh, did try to focus primarily on his trips to Horn Island. When I, when I would tell the story to the children at the museum, that was the part of the story that they related to most. Almost like a Tom Sawyer quality. That's an adventurous quality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And how are the children reacting to that? Oh, children love it. I get the greatest questions from children. Things like, uh, last week someone asked me, what do you think his favorite color was? <laughs> I, and they I said, what do you think? And they said, I think it was blue because of the sea and the sky. And he's wearing a blue shirt in the book. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, children have a lot of questions but mainly they respond to someone who had such a deep relationship to nature and to the animals especially. Not only was he a great artist, he was a colorful character. He was, so. and he was a naturalist too. I mean, he really would, uh, he illustrated everything uh, accurately. You know, when you look at the community center murals that he did in Ocean Springs, a botanist can look at any of those plants and identify them. So he really depicted nature accurately as well as artistically. Now, the book has been well received uh, yes. all across the board, but mm -hmm. in particular in Mississippi. Mm -hmm. What kind of reaction have you received? They seem like he's a favorite son. Oh, well, he's certainly the most famous artist I think that Mississippi has ever produced and one of the most colorful characters, as you say. And uh, as I have gone through Mississippi, people have responded very well because they said, you know, there was this book and that book, but never a book like this. And E.B. Lewis, being the fine artist that he is, did a marvelous job. So when I was in Ocean Springs, E.B. was there with me for the Peter Anderson Festival recently, and people were constantly coming up and complimenting him about how he had really captured the images of the island especially. Mm -hmm. So I think he really got it big time. Yeah, mm -hmm. Condensing someone as complex as Walter Anderson and his artwork as complex as it was into a children's book and then being successful about it 
You just have to be I'm over happy. the moon. Yeah. <laughs> I am. I am. I'm very proud of it. Well, it's mm. bringing you to a lot of schools. And mm -hmm. what are you talking to the uh, kids about uh, specifically? Oh, specifically, I talk to them about how I grew up in a very small town in Georgia, but I had big dreams. And how you go about accomplishing those dreams, from being published uh, as an author to I've been on television game shows. I was on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. I was in a rock band. I was a singing telegraph messenger, an actress. All of these things, I use the same method. And I talk to that about, the, uh, about that to the kids, which is basically set a goal, mm -hmm. do something every day towards the accomplishment of that goal, and never give up. Mm -hmm. If you change your mind, that's okay, set a new goal, but as long as you're still on that path, don't give up. Doesn't matter what people say, you can do it. Well, speaking of goals, do you have some other children's books in mind right now? I do, I what do. I can't talk about them. You can't talk about They're them? They're secret. Oh, okay. But you have the goal, and <laughs> yes. it's going to happen, so we'll find out yes, soon yes. enough. Mm -hmm. uh, well, in, in conclusion, is there anything else about Walter Anderson that you learned by maybe bringing it down to a child's level that you didn't know before you started? I think it just deepened my appreciation for his life and his family uh, because even though he was a great artist and he did things a little bit differently, without the support of his family, he would never have been able to accomplish and leave for us the great legacy that he has. So I really deepened my respect for his family, particularly when they were working with me on this, and it just brought everything full circle for me. It was a, they're a remarkable clan, the Andersons. Mm -hmm. And when mm -hmm. these children get a little older, and mm -hmm. they hear the name Walter Anderson is spoken around Mississippi, which mm -hmm. they will mm -hmm. for decades to come. Mm -hmm. Hopefully they'll say, I know a little bit about yeah. him. I don't have a basis to start with. And I've gotten emails from Alaska, California, Maine. It's really spreading the, uh, the, the joy of Walter Anderson and nature and art all around the country, which thrills me no end. Okay, mm -hmm. Esther Best, thank you very much for it's being our guest. Pleasure. And don't lecture me. And thank you for joining us.